Thanks. Um, so for those who haven't met me before, my name's Tom and I work at the Met Office. Um, Colin, who was it who you who told you not to apologise? Uh, Charlotte Tifo. You were about to apologise, didn't you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the first apology is that a lot of this talk is basically the same as the talk that I gave in January. So they'll be the same kind of attempts at jokes. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, same jokes. <laughs> uh, and the other thing is that this is much more of a like kind of collection of short stories because I'm kind of presenting everyone's work rather than my own today. Um, okay, so Gusto um, has been worked on by quite a lot of people over the years. It's had a bit of a resurgence in the last two years and there have been lots of different uh, places that have employed the different people who've worked on it um, over the years. Um, someone who I want to embarrass a little bit is Jack, who's done a lot of help for us in the last few months to get things running um, at scale um, and on Isambard, which I'm really pleased about. Okay, so my talk outline, I'm going to kind of explain what Gusto is for a bit. Then I have one slide on FML. And then the rest is new stuff, so things that we've either got working since January or things that are kind of working since January. Okay, so Gusto is a bit like a toolkit for FireDrake users for doing geophysical fluid dynamics. So it comes with a bunch of different classes and operators to do different things that you would want to do in an atmospheric or an ocean model. Um, and something that kind of underlines it is compatible finite element methods, which I'll talk a bit more about in a couple of slides. Um, so why would you want to use Gusto? Why have we developed Gusto? Basically because FireDrake is really helpful, and so we want to be able to exploit those things. So it's really good to be able to write our equations in code, just like it looks like in the maths. Um, it's really great. Um, to write things in weak form and not to worry too much about the details of the mesh. And, and I can contrast this with my experience of coding basically the same equations in the MetaOffices model, um, which is generally much more painful. Um, and to me that- You are being recorded. Uh, <laughs> I think that's okay, I'm not happy with that. Um, the other thing that's quite exciting about the future is that we then get access to a lot more elements that have been implemented in FireDrake would be much more work to implement in our own model. Um, and the kind of the philosophy underlining Gusto is that we want people to be able to pick up a new idea that they might want to try in their model um, and to make a, a really easy process of testing that idea out rather than having to implement it in a more complicated model. And the idea is to, to basically give a lot of flexibility and to have a bunch of different test cases that you can easily run or easily set up. Um, and then this is the kind of the reason that I personally am interested in this. So I work at the Met Office and my job is about developing our next generation weather forecasting and climate model, which is called Elfric. Um, and it's named after an early pioneer of weather forecasting called Lewis Fry Richardson. Um, and at Elfric's heart is a thing called the dynamical core, which is the bit that solves the fluid dynamics equations, and that's called Gung Ho. Um, and the reason that we're rewriting our model is that the current weather forecasting model uses a latitude longitude grid for the global simulations. And essentially, because of the poles, there's no way that we can get this to work quickly on exascale machines. So it was decided, I guess, 10 years ago or so, to move to something that was much more uniform over the, over the sphere. And um, so the cube sphere is what we're going to use. But kind of coupled with moving away from the latitude longitude grid to this cube sphere mesh is that we don't have orthogonal um, grids anymore. So the thing that we're then going to use is a finite element discretization. And the kind of the numerics of this are then set up to match the numerics that are used in the existing model. So it kind of matches an Arakawa C grid and the Charlie Phillips staggering. Don't worry if you don't know those things, that's not important for today. Um, so Alfred is our new model and we've been developing it for roughly 10 years and it's gonna be operational um, in roughly 2026. Um, and this is where Gusto ties in for me 
This is a great way of new ideas can then easily be implemented in Gusto and tested out without having to implement them in a more painful way in Elfric. And that will give us a good idea whether it's worth that pain of implementing it in Elfric. Okay, so there's a thing that sits at the heart of Gusto, which is called FML, the form manipulation language. And I mentioned this in January, and it's going to be more relevant to all of you because it's now sat in a pull request for Firedrake. Um, so this is a small bit of software where you can take a form or a part of a, an equation and you can give it a label to say what it is, and then this becomes an object that's called a term. And then you can combine terms to, form, to give something that we call a labeled form. Um, and then this will be a bit clearer with an example. So here's something that looks a bit like FireDrake code. We have a form that's, um, so this is like a transport term. Um, so we've got a test function and a wind and a gradient. Um, and what we can do is apply a label operator to this form. Um, so this transport label thing is a label object. And that gives us a term. And then we can add it together with some other terms to give us what would really be something like a residual. Um, but this will be a labeled form object. And the reason that we want to do this is that we can then manipulate um, this labeled form based on a bunch of maps and filters which allow us to do lots of really handy tricks and things that make, um, basically this is where Gusto gets all of its flexibility from. Mm -hmm. So here what I'm saying is, how do I get that transport term back from that, this um, residual here? And this is something that you wouldn't really have been able to do uh, without FML. Um, and then I've got some cool uses that I'm particularly fond of. So. Uh, something that I really like is we have a thing called a wrapper, which will wrap around a, a time discretization, and that allows you to do some fun stuff like change the space in which you're going to solve one term, or replace the test function for SUPG. Um, we store linearizations of all of our terms in labels, which is really cool because then we can make our linear equation set by just replacing every term with its own linearization. Um, and then something that I also like is physics schemes. So we think of these as uh, sources or sinks to equations, but there'll actually be something really complicated going on in order to try and evaluate that source or that sink. So we have a function that's stored in a label that tells us what to do with the source or the sink. Um, so this is coming soon to Firedrake because it's now in a pull request because we're porting it from Gusto to Firedrake. Okay, new stuff. We have a newly designed website. That's that. Uh, <laughs> uh, so this slide was going to be a bit boring. So some cool work that Alex and Tim have done is adding some um, new time steppers to Gusto. So I thought I'd make it a bit interesting by coming up with a strange picture for each time stepper. So one that we already had is the scheme that the Met Office uses, which we call semi-implicit quasi-Newton. So this is a picture of Newton that I've done something strange to. Um, Alex has implemented um, some multi-level time steppers, such as Leapfrog. Uh, we also have now some generalised runger cutter schemes. This picture is meant to be a butcher tableau, because you can oh. give the scheme a butcher <laughs> tableau. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, so the idea is to get to doing some IMEX schemes, and Alex is interested in doing some spectral deferred correction schemes. Um, and that's where he's going with this. Um, we've been trying to start building up a library of test cases, so this is one that Tim added. Uh, so this is, I think Colin calls this the twisty twosty test. Yes. It's uh, just a classic test to look at kind of how your transport scheme behaves, and uh, the reason you have these strange kind of slotted cylinders is to look at whether you've got overshoots or undershoots. So we have some test cases like this that we're starting to put in. Um, okay, so physics, this is a, a thing that we've been developing recently. So this is kind of a fake physics experiment that I've done, where I make a source term which is like some volcanic eruption over Iceland, and then there's some random wind and I blow it around. This is just to look... Yeah, so this is just to look pretty. There's no real scientific value in this, but it's the kind of thing that we can do really easily in Gusto. Um, so Nell, who's a PhD student of Gemma and Beth's, has been 
um, implementing the moist thermal shallow water equations. <clears throat> so we saw in the previous session some simulations of the Williamson 5 test case. So this is a moist thermal version of that. So the thermal shallow water equations include um, this B for a, is a buoyancy term, additionally to the kind of the normal depth term, which I've written with eta here. And this obeys a kind of um, advective equation, but with some source. And this source comes from the effects of uh, water vapor and cloud converting between one another. So in this plot, the kind of the dark colors that appear later on in the simulation is rain forming. Um... <laughs> okay. Um, and the, the rain just kind of, in, the, in this case, the rain just uh, doesn't have a sink, so it just builds and blows around. Um, but we think that this is a really nice equation set for testing some physics dynamics coupling ideas because it's much simpler than a 3D model that you would normally need. But we've got some latent heating effects in there. Um, so I'm quite excited about this. Okay, so that's stuff that is now in our main branch. Stuff that's like in pull requests. Um, so uh, Nell and Gemma have been working on parallel in time methods and one that they've got implemented in Gusto is the Rexy method. Um, so this is a method that involves writing the kind of evolution of a linear system through an exponential integrator. Um, and the idea is that you can uh, then take smaller problems that you solve in parallel. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make this more interesting than following a dinosaur <laughs> right there. Um, so they've implemented this um, and they're also implementing it in Elfric and I can see the pain that they're having in Elfric versus doing it in Gusto. So that's been something that's been interesting to watch. So nice to have this. Um, yes. So something else that uh, Gemma's recently got working is um, mesh adaptivity for the shallow water equations. So this is the Golovsky jet case that we've seen also before. Um, so here the mesh adapts to the gradient of the potential vorticity. Um, and I think something that Gemma was really pleased about is that at this resolution with an icosahedral mesh, you'd normally get the wrong um, number of vortices appearing at the end because you get some grid imprinting from the coarseness of the grid. But as the mesh adapts, you don't get this grid imprinting and you get a better solution. So this is straight R, this is like non jump area stuff, right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. This is a much more boring slide. Sorry, maybe let me just put a question. Yeah, so how do, how do you how do you do the adaptive step here? Um dunno. You would sorry. Yes. <laughs> it's moving mesh adaptivity, so you're using the fact that the mesh is a field in five rate and then you're solving the equations. Ah. Yeah, the equation's written in the moving frame of the new mesh. Sorry, this is a more boring slide, it's about transport schemes. Um, so, a uh, thing that um, I need Gusto to be able to do so that I can compare it with Elfric is the lowest order set of spaces. And transport schemes for the lowest order spaces are very bad, or finite element transport schemes for the lowest order spaces are very bad. So, this is me. So, these uh, three different lines are um, a Gaussian hill that's been transported once around the periodic interval. And they all have the same number of degrees of freedom but they're just in different spaces. And DG0 is not even first order, the, the kind of the standard upwind scheme. So this is really diffusive. You, you would have started with something that looks like the red line and it's just ugh, kind of slumped out. Um, so in order to have an effective model, I need to have second order transport schemes at, at, at least. Um, so we have these implemented. Uh, and that's something that I've presented at these workshops before, in which we use the reconstruction operator that, that James was kind of talking about before to build a higher order representation of the space and then do transport there. Um, now, the thing that I've been thinking about recently is that with a second order scheme, you get something like this blue line, um, and second order schemes tend to be dispersive, uh, their errors. And that means that you get these kind of oscillations as things get transported. Um, and so for this reason, Elfric actually uses a third order scheme, which would give you something more like the red line. So I've been thinking about how maybe we could do that. So I've kind of got a harebrained scheme that I've been working on where we don't just reconstruct the field, but we also reconstruct its gradient and then 
solve some problem in order to get a, a, a solution that's even higher order um, that you then transport to get a higher order transport. Okay, this plot is from today. <laughs> okay, um, there's two slides left, so that's good. Um, this is a 3D test now that we're able to do with the 3D full equations. This is kind of a 101 for NWP test cases. So it has this, this big baroclinic wave um, that Daniel Witt has been working on with Gemma. Um, and what is actually cool is that Elfric can only run this stably to 12 days, and we've managed 15. So I'm quite pleased with that. Um, and then the final thing that I've been doing over the last few weeks is working on a tropical cyclone test case. Um, so this has a bunch of physics added to our dental core to do things like heating from the surface um, and diffusion of fluxes and things like this. I've not got this going very well, to be honest. It, it falls over before it gets to two days and I'm not sure that all of my physics coupling is right. Um, but I do have a nice, it does at least move a little bit, the cyclone. Okay, basically at the end now. So future plans, we've got a journal article that we're writing. Probably every single meeting that we're ever at, we're like, we've got a journal article coming soon, but I promise it is coming soon. Um, I'm going to add some more physics schemes in, uh, and we've got a kind of collaboration that we're going to start with the Exoplanet group at the University of Exeter, because they think that some of this could be a nice thing to use. Um, I'm quite interested in investigating new ideas in physics dynamics coupling, so maybe doing the physics in different elements of the dynamics, um, adding some more GFD equations, and then things for um, the kind of the, the thing that's going to replace gung ho. Um, so, sorry, these are where the old jokes come in, because I say this every time, but gung ho currently uses the, the lowest order elements. I'm interested in going to higher order elements, which I call ho gung ho. And then the Christmassy version, where the <laughs> higher order is only in the horizontal, so gung ho ho ho, um, and then parallel and time methods. And of course, we're probably going to end up exploring some machine learning things, because that's what we have to do for our careers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for listening, um, and please just ask me if you've got any questions, or you think that there's something that we need to do, or that there's something that you would like to use. Yeah, vertical slice is still everything. There's only one thing that we don't currently have supported, which unfortunately was the thing that you were doing, which is the ED model. Okay. Yeah. But I think it's really easy to set up new things um, now. Are you interested in putting the ED model back? Or? If it's useful, then yes, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if the <laughs> How do you? Uh, I, I thought that the argument this is, this is becoming common. I thought that the argument about diffusion dispersion related to order was order in time, not order in space. Uh, so I, I, mean, I think it's good to go yeah. order in space. Anyway, yeah. But is, uh, do you know that you're having the same effect in space? Um, you're right that you can't completely decouple the two. But generally, with finite volume schemes, where we're using the same like runge cutter method the effect of the spatial reconstruction will be the leading order thing as to whether it's dispersive or diffusive. Okay, I have to understand Is that. <laughs> Any more questions? Uh, okay, if not, thank you. Thank you.